Welcome back to Sleep Better TV. We continue our discussion on pediatric sleep uh, disorders and airway problems with my guest, Dr. David Rawson, with the TMJ Sleep Therapy Center in London, Ontario, Canada. Uh, Dr. Rawson, what are some of the symptoms of sleep uh, airway problems? Uh, at home, parents can just sit back and look at their child both in the daytime activity and when they're sleeping. So let's start with daytime. Let's pretend your children are watching TV or playing video games at a distance and you're in the house doing other things. Look over and see if your child is sitting upright. See if your child's mouth is closed when they're breathing and not talking or eating. Open mouth breathing is a very, very common finding in children who have a blocked nasal airway for either adenoids, allergies, injury, and they develop an open mouth breathing habit because it's easier to get air through an open mouth that's bigger than two small holes that are closed. So open mouth breathing, dark eyes under the, uh, dark uh, circles under the eyes, we call them shiners, are often indications of chronic nasal obstruction. Just noticing that on a regular basis and in relating it to how you breathe because when you have a cold, you realize how hard it is to breathe through your nose so you always walk around and feel like you got a bad cold. If your child is doing that in a normal case in the daytime, there's probably an airway issue. In the bedtime, in, in, during their sleep, take a look at them. Are they on their back mostly? Are they on their side? Some children actually sleep on their stomachs, face into the pillow. Try to imagine how you could breathe in that condition. Watch their body motion. Are they flailing around? Do they seem to be gasping? Do they seem to be restless? Or is there a very calm, very gentle respiration of the body? Is the chest rising and falling slowly? Or is there jerking motion? Is there noise? Is there a sucking sound? Anything that looks unnatural should be an indication, at least for the time you observe that patient, there may be a potential airway problem. Thirdly, look inside the patient's mouth. Use a, a toothbrush handle, use a spoon, and have your child open their mouth, drop their tongue, and if you see large tonsils at the back of the throat, we call them grade one, two, three, four. If you see two big red circles that seem to be touching, that patient has virtually no space for air or food. Those are an, indicated, an indication for an evaluation by, by a medical professional. We generally would like to have them referred to an ear, nose, and throat specialist, and generally would like those to be removed if possible. Can you talk about how orthodontic treatment can actually help with airway uh, difficulty? That's a very good question, and because we do a lot of orthodontics in our practice, we spend a lot of time trying to explain to our patients how the conventional approach of a lot of orthodontic treatments, it's changing slowly, but conventionally for many years, a crowded dentition or crowded teeth malocclusion was often treated by, first of all, removing a number of teeth, lining up the rest of them, making a nice straight row without understanding that that actually was constricting the cranial bones, constricting the size of the face, making the floor of the nose rise up, closing off the airway, and giving the patient a, a nicer smile, but not realizing that it's constricted the physical bony box that we were given for our body. So in my practice, and I think I'd like to see all orthodontics think about doing it the other way. Do not extract teeth at least have the upper jaw expanded. The upper jaw is actually the housing for the lower face. Do not extract upper teeth, expand as much as possible, which will allow this area to open up and stay open. And you'll get a very good result, both aesthetically and functionally. So the big lesson in our office is do not remove teeth orthodontically unless you really have to. Dr. Ross, and finally, do you ever prescribe medication to treat these uh, problems? Well, as you know, Scott, uh, our practice is based on a very holistic structural arrangement of the body. We really don't do surgery or suggest it. We don't um, support a lot of medications when there's another approach. But I do have my uh, pediatric patients get introduced to a new miracle drug that we've been pushing for a long time. And uh, it's called oxygen. It's called air. It's called breathing through your nose easily, regularly, all the time, not having to breathe through your mouth. If you're if all of our patients would get a regular dose of oxygen with every breath, they would uh, grow faster, grow healthier, sleep better, be more attentive in the daytime, and quite likely a lot fewer kids would be diagnosed as being ADHD because they actually breathe uh, better during their sleep. Dr. Rawson, thanks again. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Dr. David Rawson with the TMJ Sleep Therapy Center in London, Ontario, Canada. Uh, you can find more content just like this at sleepbetter.tv. Thanks for watching.